Listen. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another Table Talk. I'm sure you're surprised to see us. We had mentioned at the last one that we were going to have much better looking people here, our wives talking about mental health, but you have to deal with us one, or not mental health, health, uh, uh, biblical womanhood. If I can get my words right, English is difficult, but uh, you have to deal with us one more week, and I hope that you're encouraged. We are talking about mental health, and then next week, we'll have better looking people on here, uh, our wives, uh, with Miss Erin Bitten, uh, who is a person on our staff. She's our, our, she's our assistant, and they'll be talking about biblical womanhood, but we're going to talk about mental health this week. And as uh, we have four principles that we want to share with you that each pastor is going to share with you about something that's important. If you want to write these down, uh, as they go, I think that will be really important. And these four principles are this. It's not your fault. God sees you and is with you. Third, God speaks to you. And fourth, you are not alone. And so those are, are some things that we want to talk about to you with mental health. But as we talk about this, I think it's important. We're, we're just kind of skimming the surface of this. Mental health is obviously something that's very deep. But I do want you to understand that as we share uh, these, these principles, you have to understand that mental health is just like any other health. You were created in one person, in God's image, in three elements. Okay, not, not elements, but three parts in one person. You are both, you are spiritual, emotional, and physical. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. And so when it comes to mental health, it, it's, it encompasses all of those. And, but primarily, the thing that's eternal is your spirit. And so we're going to be talking about the spiritual element of mental health. And so uh, I, I'm really excited for the guys to share about this and for you to consider it because all of us um, need to have good mental health. And, and when we're struggling with it, whether it's anxiety or depression or any other sort of disorder or thing, uh, these four principles can be an encouragement to you. So the first one is, it's not your fault. And Thomas, I, I wanted you to just take a minute to share uh, why it's so important that people understand whenever they're struggling with some element of mental health, that it's not their fault. Yeah, I think when we get to this topic on mental illness, um, I think the first thing is like, God, why did you create me like this? Uh, and then we start blaming God when it comes to mental uh, illness. Uh, and we start to think that it's our fault, the reason why we have mental illness. And so I just want to encourage you guys just real quick from scripture, uh, from John 9, starting in verse 1 to 3. And, and John writes this. He says, as Jesus passed by, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, it was not this man's sin or his parents, but that the works of God might display in him. And so one of the things that I've struggled with for the longest time uh, is anxiety. Now I haven't been diagnosed with anxiety, but I'm able to assess my heart. Uh, and I'm able to look inside my heart and understand, I and mean, there's some struggles that I have. And one of those struggles is anxiety. And anxiety really, anxiety. Uh, I lose sleep because of anxiety. Uh, I uh, stay up worrying about decisions that I've made because of anxiety. And so for me personally, what I've seen the Lord do is how he's used my anxiety uh, for his glory and for his works. And so even though I have anxiety, even though I struggle with anxiety, I also know that it's not my fault. And the reason why I know it's not my fault is because God is using my anxiety for his glory and for my good. And so my encouragement to you guys who struggle with mental illness, if you struggle with anxiety or some other form of mental illness, is coming to a place of understanding that uh, your mental illness is not your fault. But also, if we would have kept going and reading in that passage of scripture, we find out and see that that man who was blind that now can see was used in a way to witness to a bunch of other people 
that Jesus is the son of God. He's like, hey, I don't know who this man is. I just know that at first I was blind. I was born blind, but now I can see. And so I think God uses uh, those things for his glory. It's an opportunity for us to advance the gospel, even with the struggles with mental illness. Yeah, that's a really good encouragement. I, I, it's similar to what we were talking about last night with the unexpected things in life, that God uses every single thing that's unexpected for our good. And you, you may have not expected to be struggling with anxiety or struggling with some form of depression or being this kind of low, maybe during this season. But the fact of the matter is that God can use everything that the enemy intends for evil for our good and for his glory. And that's what we see in that story. And, and that's, that's, that's awesome encouragement, Thomas. Uh, I, I think something that, that we also really need to understand is one of the most incredible truths in all of scripture that is an encouragement to me is that as God sees everything in the whole world, he sees me. And, and this is an unbelievable truth. Zer, I, I want you to encourage them with the fact that God sees you and is with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just thinking of the attributes of God, right? God is omniscient. He's omnipresent, meaning he, he knows all things, but he's also everywhere present. And so he sees us and he's with us. And it makes me think of, uh, Genesis 16, right? The story of Hagar. So I don't know if y'all know this, but right, Abraham or Abram and Sarai before they were Abraham and Sarah, they couldn't conceive. And so uh, Hagar, the servant of Sarai, was given to Abram. They went into each other and uh, she conceived. And so Sarai was angry with her and dealt really harshly with uh, Hagar. And so Hagar flees, she goes to the wilderness. But then I love it because that's where God actually meets her in the wilderness. And I just want to read real quickly verse 11 and 13. Uh, this is God meeting her in the wilderness. Uh, the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael. But then I love this. this because the Lord has listened to your affliction. And then in verse 13, so she called the name of the Lord uh, who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing or another way that's translated is that you are a God who sees me. And that story just resonates so much with me because I think about uh, my time before Fielder. So me and Farah, we just had, uh, uh, we, we were pregnant. So we were about to have baby Kai. Uh, and if I'm honest with you guys, there was a season where we were hurt by the very people of God, uh, by the church. And so we actually fleed into our own little wilderness, like a season without church, without community. Uh, and it was a, a rough season. But the beauty is that, man, God saw us and he was actually with us through all of it. And he actually met us in the wilderness. And, and I love it because I remember I got a text. I was working at Chick-fil-A at the time. I got a text from my good friend, Kyle. Uh, Callie actually reached out to uh, Farah and that just brought this like really good spiral into us meeting Matt Hunter, meeting with Pastor Jason, meeting Fielder Church. And God saw us and was with us that whole time and placed us into a community where, man, we got to be loved on and experienced just really that God was with us the entire time. And so, man, for you, like a verse that really sticks out to me and clings to me is, Psalm 34, verse 18, which just says that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So just remember, God sees you and he's with you. That is so good, Zer. Uh, it's so good. Like it, it, I actually struggled to find the unmute button because I was so taken back by what you said. Like, uh, guys, it was so cool. Uh, I like to witness, I've seen it in my own life, but so cool to actually witness that take place in Zer's life. And, you know, I remember the first month, every time we'd pray, you could tell like visibly that Zer was oh, so overtaken by the love of God because God was meeting him and healing him. And what God did to Zer, God's done to me. He's done to each of us. And he wants to do to you. He sees you in the midst of, of whatever circumstance you're in, 
and, and he wants to meet you right there. So uh, I encourage you to, to wait for that and lean into that and look for that. Um, but just like he, I, I think it leads perfectly into what Blake's going to talk about, because not only does God see us and meet us there, but he speaks to us just like he spoke to Hagar. He wants to speak to you. And, and he does that through his word. So, so Blake, what, what does it look like that God speaks uh, to us? Yeah, so, I mean, the, God's word speaks to, speak to us in multiple ways. The, the first thing I think about is, is God speaks to your experience. Like we see, we see in God's word that like the, in, in the Psalms many times, we're afraid to talk about affliction or mental illness or or anguish and so god's word speaks to your experience like in uh psalms 25 16 it says turn to me and be gracious for me for i am lonely and afflicted these these are crying cries to the lord uh, psalms 88 3 for my soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to sheol so, so God's word first, it, it speaks to your experience. It, it shows and like, you you know, God's word has an answer for the struggles you're going through. You, God's not surprised by it. He's, he's, his, the people of God have experienced from the beginning, um, mental illness and struggle. But then we also know that God's promises are true and God's promises speak to us in a way that is, is encouraging and uplifting in Second Peter 1, 3 through 4, you hear us talk about it all the time in the student ministry. You have everything you need for life and godliness uh, in the promises of God, in the word of God. And what that doesn't exclude peace, uh, or even another way to think about that word peace is, is wholeness when you feel anxious or depressed. Like uh, God's word, the promises of God have everything you need to feel whole uh, and full in Christ, even in the midst of depression and anxiety. And so God's word speaks to your experience and it also offers peace and wholeness. It's a good word. And, and it's important to know that the Lord is with us. Yeah. You know, like he's with us, but he also, like I said at the beginning, we got to take a holistic view. God not, is not only with us, but he's give, he, he wants us to know that we're not alone, not from him or from other people. And so Joshua, just from your experience, what talk to, talk to us about what it means that you're not alone. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't know I was next. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> I thought I was last. It's okay. Uh, you know, I, I think everything that Zur and and uh, Blake have just said is so good. Uh, the fact that the Lord sees us, the Lord speaks to us. Um, it just leads me to believe. It leads me to see uh, exactly what you know the Lord told Joshua when he took over for Moses, and that he just told him, "You're not alone." And, and I think it's so good to know that the Lord is with us. It's so good to know that, that we, can, we can seek the Lord at all times, that he, he uh, exists within us. Um, but I think there's another level to that, you know. Uh, myself, having struggled with depression and anxiety and, and uh, you know, just, just like Zer, you know, is able to look back and self-diagnose. Like, uh, I used to... Uh, I had to go to the doctor and, and, and pursue treatment. And, and I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed by a, by a doctor with uh, depression and anxiety. And, and I, I uh, was prescribed medications and all these things. And um, what, I, what I realized now, uh, just looking back on the whole situation, struggling with um, anxiety and depressions in relation to the work that I was doing overseas and then at home. And then also in my home, you know, my wife and I had wanted to be parents and we kept uh having you know we kept having miscarriage things factored into me just ending up in a place where i was so uh depressed so anxious and uh i'd get home from work and all i wanted to do was be left alone and sit on the couch i didn't want to go anywhere uh, i isolated myself and i think what what it was is that uh you know because of who 
who I was at the time, somebody who didn't think they needed godly community, somebody who didn't think they needed the word of God, somebody who, who was like, man, I don't need any of these quote unquote, you know, any of these disciplines. I just need to be right with God. I just need to have a personal relationship. But at the same time, my biggest complaint about why I wasn't in the right place with God was because I felt like one, I wasn't hearing from him, but I felt like he wasn't hearing me. Uh, and, 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 the, the latter is, uh, is, so, um, is, so, is so not true. God always hears us, just like uh, Blake and Zer said that he speaks to us and sees us. But, but what was so true is, is that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't hearing from him because I wasn't hearing from him in the way that he asks us to. And that's by um, existing in godly community. That's by praying. That's by uh, diving into his word. And, and what I've learned, what I take back from the whole situation is, uh, and, and my, my students have heard this before, but the Lord has won the victory over my depression and my anxiety, uh, not because uh, I could do anything or because uh, I overcame it or anything like that, but because Jesus in his sovereignty rescued me from it. And the way that he did that was in October of 2018, I sat down with one of my closest uh, mentors and, and told me, he's like, man, like, why are you sitting around waiting for God to punish you when what's true is, is that the promise of the New Testament is redemption. And, and Jesus redeemed me and, and brought me out of depression and being invited to Fielder and going to Tony's community group and all these things made me realize that the exact opposite of what I was saying I didn't need to do to pursue my relationship with God was the exact thing that I needed to be. And it's the exact thing that the Lord used to rescue me from my depression and my anxiety. And that was godly community. In the book of Hebrews, it says, it says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And I think that's such a good truth because what we see is, is that, yes, we are not alone. God is with us. But another great thing is, is that we're not alone because we have brothers and sisters in Christ who can bear with one, that, that, you know, we can bear with one another. We can help each other with our burdens. We can encourage each other with love. Uh, and, and so, you know, godly community has been so crucial in my life with my community group, with Fielder Church, just, you know, even before I was on staff and, and even more now having my brothers here with me, uh, you know, that godly community, knowing that I'm not alone, knowing that I have uh, the Lord present in my life in so many ways, just has so benefited me to where I can see that I'm now experiencing that really good abundant life. And so, yeah, guys, you are not alone. Uh, and, 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 you know, God is present in our lives. Quote, you know, Zoe M, check out the merch. Check, this is life, check it out. <laughs> well, hey, I, that's a really good truth and encouragement. It can really, it's really easy right now in the midst of quarantine to feel like you're alone. And, uh, what's God's truth is always true and it doesn't change based on our circumstances. And so I, I want you to know you're not alone. I, I mean, I'm quarantined just like everybody else is. And, but I've got this community virtually of these guys. I've got people in my neighborhood that we're, you know, that are a community with me that, that we get on zoom and talk. Like it, it's, it's important to understand I can still call these guys and confess sin to them. I can still reach out to these guys virtually and say, I need encouragement. I can still reach out to these guys and say, uh, I, I need you to pray for me. Any of those things, we're not alone and we all need encouragement. So don't give up meeting together with your with the people that are in your village, you know, Sunday mornings, keep doing that with your leader and that group in your grade, continue to do that. Uh, you know, FaceTime one of us, we'd love to kick it with you on FaceTime. Uh, we'd love to play some games with you on Zoom, whatever. But you're not alone and you're loved and you matter so much and God sees you and, and he wants you to lean into him. So students, we love you so much. And I, I do want to give you this encouragement. If you feel like you need professional help, like I said at the beginning, there's the physical, there's the mental, and there's the spiritual. And you need to lean into the Lord, absolutely. But there's nothing wrong if, if with seeking uh, help outside uh, that, that's a little bit more professional. And one of the people that we partner with a lot is Impact Counseling and Guidance Center 
uh, through the, the church of uh, Lake Arlington Baptist Church, which is now the Lake Church. So if, if you want any information, you can go to impactcounseling.com. They are meeting with people uh, continually virtually, and uh, you can look into that. And if you need any other resources, please feel free to reach out to us. Right now, we've got a meeting, so we got to get to it. We love you. Hey, listen, guys, Zer, Thomas, Joshua, Blake, you guys know you're my dogs. Woo, woo. Love you guys and feel the students. We'll see you later. Listen, I'm going to teach y'all all a lesson. This for those questioning, wrestling, your confessions. Don't let the enemy get you second guessing. You've been bought with the price. The life of heaven's blessings.